This video is on equilibrium constant. The symbol for equilibrium constant is Kc. The formula is the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. These square brackets means concentration of, and whatever is inside the brackets would be what the concentration is of. So concentration of products over concentration of reactants. This is just a very general formula. But when you write it out, we write it out like this. For example, if we have these, the little letters A, B, C, and D are our balancing figures for the equation. So these would be numbers, for example. The capital A, B, C, and D are for the different elements and compounds involved in the reaction. So what we would do is identify that A and B represent reactants and C and D represent products. We would then fill it into our equation. So Kc equals concentration of products. So we need to say the concentration of C and the concentration of D. Note they are times together. And the balancing number in front of the compound is put to the power of over here. And that whole thing will be over the concentration of reactants. So it will be the concentration of A and the concentration of B. Note that little a is to the power and little b is to the power. This will make a little more sense when doing a practical example, but this is need, needs to be understood. Okay. Then just a side note, they can ask you one or two practical questions after asking you to calculate Kc. So if Kc is a high value, that means that the concentration of the products are greater than the concentration of the reactants. You can understand this by looking at the fraction. If we have a high number of products over a low number of reactants, this would mean that it will be a high number divided by a low number. That will give you a higher value than if the top was smaller than the bottom. If the top is smaller than the bottom, you get a fraction, you would get a fraction, and that would mean that Kc is low, meaning concentration of products less than the concentration of reactants. So that's just a little side note. And then also, if you are told that you have an endothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction absorbs energy. Therefore, an increase in temperature will lead to a high result in products because if the Ford reaction is endothermic, they, the Ford reaction absorbs energy. So if there's a higher temperature, more energy to be absorbed, therefore more products will be produced, therefore a higher Kc value because there'll be a higher concentration of products. If there is an exothermic reaction and it's an increase in temperature, and say the Ford reaction is exothermic and it's an increase in temperature, then the reverse re reaction will be favored. This is because an increase in temperature always favors endothermic. So if the Ford reaction is exothermic, that means the reverse reaction is exothermic. So, exothermic reaction, if there's an increase in temperature, there'll be a decrease in Kc because there'll be a higher concentration of reactants than products. Okay. Then we move on to the actual calculations of Kc, and this is generally the more difficult part, but once you be practice and understand the table, then it becomes a lot easier. So this table is known as your RICE table because down the side you have R-I-C-E, RICE. Everyone's RICE tables are different. I like to use this format. So I start off with my R being ratio. So I write the ratio of each compound in the reaction. You basically, for ratio, just need to take the number that's in the front of the compound. So over here, there is no number, so then we know that is one. Over here, there is a three, so it's three, one, one. Okay, then I stands for initial moles. 
C stands for change in moles. E stands for equilibrium moles. And then I add another little column or row, sorry, concentration equilibrium. So this is what your concentration will be at equilibrium. You would use your equilibrium moles and the volume of your container to calculate this. Why do I use this row? Because when you are calculating Kc, you want to know your concentration of your products and reactants, not your moles. Okay, so everything that I've written in black in my table is things that were given. So we were told that the initial moles of carbon monoxide was one and the initial moles of hydrogen was three. They say this was placed in an empty container. Therefore, we know that we have zero products, so zero methane and zero water. Um, sometimes there are already a certain amount of products at the initial amount, but if they don't specify, then we assume zero, especially if they say we're placed in an empty container. Okay. Then basically what happens is this is the amount that we start with. And we start over here. We've added the carbon monoxide to the hydrogen, and then the reaction starts. And it starts changing and this until it reaches equilibrium over here. And at equilibrium, there's a certain number of moles of reactants and a certain number of moles of product. And at equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So that means that there'll be a, the same amount of moles throughout of each thing throughout because it's constantly going back and forth at the same rate. So let's get on to actually calculating our values. We were also told that we have a 10 decimeter cubed container. That will come in handy when we are calculating our concentration at the end. Okay. So now, these were our initial moles because this is what we had at the beginning. Initial means beginning. Then we have to calculate what changed between the initial amount and equilibrium. What, how much of my reactants were used up and how many products were produced to reach the equilibrium. Okay. It was also told to us that at equilibrium, there were 0 0.4 moles of water or H2O gas. So over here, this is another thing that was given. So now we look at our table and we see that we have, we filled in that we have zero and zero over here. We see that we've, the initial went from zero to 0, 0,4. From the beginning, it changed to 0, 0,4 at equilibrium. Therefore, the change was plus 0, 0,4. Now that we've got one change, we can work out the rest of the change. It's important to note that we always have pluses with our products and minuses with our reactants. So now we're going to use the ratio. For every one of the H2O gas, we have one methane gas, three hydrogen gas, and three carbon monoxide. I mean, one carbon monoxide gas. So one, three, one, one. So then what we're going to do is we're going to use the ratio to calculate the change in all of them. So if it's one to one over here, it's going to be plus 0, 0,4 becomes plus 0, 0,4. And now our reactants are going to minus. This is because they are being used up to form products. So we're going from one to three. The ratio is one to three. So we're going to take our 0, 0,4 and multiply it by three to get 1, 2. And because reactant it's going to decrease so minus one comma two and then we're going one to one so minus zero comma four 
Once we have our change, we can work out what we'll have at the end or at the equilibrium. So we're going to have 1 minus 0, 0,4 gives us 0, 0,6. 3 minus 1.2 gives us 1.8. 0 plus 0, 0,4 gives us 0, 0,4. And like we know, 0 plus 0, 0,4 gives us 0, 0,4. Now we've got at our we've got our equilibrium moles. But we can't use this to calculate Kc. It's always in concentration. So now we need to use this formula, C equals N over V, mole, uh, concentration equals moles over volume. We know our volume of our container is 10 decimeters cubed. So we know that we're going to calculate our concentration by take the, taking the number of moles at equilibrium and dividing them by 10. So over here, the 0, 0,6 divided by 10 gives you 0, 0,06. 1,8 divided by 10 gives you 0, 0,18. 0, 0,4 divided by 10, 0, 0,04. 0, 0,4 divided by 10, 0, 0,04. Now these values are our concentration at equilibrium amounts. Now we can calculate Kc. Kc is equal to concentration of product over concentration of reactants. Our products are concentration of CH4 concentration of H2O over concentration of CO and concentration of H2 to the power of 3. Why to the power of 3? Because that is the balancing number in front. You always take the balancing number and put it to the power. Then you're going to fill in your values. Your concentration of CH4 at equilibrium will work out to be 0, 0,04. So you fill that in. Same as H2O. Then our H2 over here, 0, 0,18 to the 3, and our CO, 0, 0,06. You tap this into your calculator, and you get a figure of 4,57. Generally, it's always rounding off to two decimal places. They might ask you to round off to more, but it's up to the instructions and the marker. Okay. Um, and then just a side note, if you are ever given a solid in your reaction over here, you're going to ignore it. So you basically, if this was CO with an S in S standing for solid, you would just scratch out this column and you wouldn't involve it in your calculations. That is all for equilibrium constant.